Ableton On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yehad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Abel Dinonaire has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Abel Dinonaire is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Able to Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And before we get started, we would like to say uh, special thanks to Washington County Mental Health and the Learning Collaborative and Washington County Mental Health uh, Services for sponsoring Able to On Air, as well as Green Mountain Support Services and many other partners in our fight for advocacy, uh, including the Vermont Division for the Blind, Vermont Association for the Blind, and the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition of Montpelier, Vermont, and many, many, many others. Um, we would like to welcome Mary Kay Casper of the Learning Collaborative Washington County Mental Health Services. Welcome, uh, Mary. Finally, we get to see you face to face. It's so great to be here, Lawrence, and to, to be able to be with you now face to face. And uh, explain to us what Washington County Mental Health um, Services is with the Learning Collaborative and how it's been working during the pandemic um, and even before the pandemic. Sure. So the Learning Collaborative is a program within Community Developmental Services and it is for individuals with developmental and intellectual disabilities and people that are uh, living on the autism spectrum that live in Washington County and receive services from Washington, Washington County Mental Health Services. And it is a program that provides a diversity of programs, activities, and experiences that range from artistic expression to lifelong learning skills to academic skills to going out on excursions and adventures and physical fitness. So it is so diverse and wide in terms of what we offer during the day for folks to sign up and come in. Some of our folks have support staff that come with them too. And what's really great right now is that we've been able to open up again for people to come and see face to face. But how has um, I'm sorry. Sure. How has the learning collaborative been during the pandemic, and even though the pandemic is still going on? Right. Exactly. So that was a really tough time and challenging for us because when we first got word about the pandemic, we had to close the doors. So people couldn't come into classes face to face. And so we really had to think, how can we provide the, the activities for people so that they can remain connected with us and with each other? So what we did is that we did online classes. Mm -hmm. So we used Zoom and we got classes online, which a lot of people took advantage of. Mm -hmm. We also did a newsletter on, a, we started off doing it um, every day and then we did it weekly where we had a variety of information and activities people could do. 
We also recorded classes, so if someone um, couldn't make our regular classes, they could go to YouTube, mm -hmm. on Washington County's YouTube, and they could listen to a class and see staff um, that they normally would see face to face. Was that harder for some folks? Yes, I mean, it, it what's- That's well, not, that, that weren't, was that, oh, let me rephrase the question. Was it harder for some folks who are not, um, Technologically, I think I'm saying it right. Technologically inclined, who right. don't, who did, or uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the challenges with online were one: Do you have internet access, and do you have the technology to do it, and do you have someone to help you do it? So one of the one of the ways we dealt with that was to first, you know, get people hooked up to some of the free online access that the governor had offered in different areas. And then um, for folks that didn't have technology, we had we gave out free tablets to people so that they could Do get they have online. to return they had to return those nope, tablets? They've they're theirs. They they wow. were given to them. Yep. Wow. And then we did have staff that would help folks get online. And also in the newsletter that we gave out to keep people, we also had instructions about getting online. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be honest and say not everybody was able to do it, um, but we tried to get as many people as possible that were connected Did to Did you that. offer, does Washington County, in that case, does Washington County Mental Health, through the Learning Collaborative, provide uh, computer um, basic computer classes for those that want to learn right. how to use Right. If that's I'm a, asking the wrong yeah, question, I'm that's sorry. That's a really good question. We don't have regular classes that we offer, but I think that that's something that we are thinking about doing now because really if you're going to have classes to learn about how to use computers, we need to have face-to-face, -face, you know, have them come in so that we can sit at a computer. So that is a, an area that we want to provide some activities and some learning for. So I think you're absolutely right. I will say that the other thing that we did for folks that, um, for everybody that wanted, we made up these like pandemic packages or party packages that we gave out. We would drive you to their house. It in your, the form in one of the other editions in January yeah. of Able to Learn Air about that. Can you explain right. about those? Yeah. So what we did was the Learning Collaborative put together a bundle of fun items, like it could be um, art supplies, it could be like fun games, or even f like food, like for the holidays, we put in uh, holiday cookies with, with um, frosting, that you can do your own frosting, and we'd put it all in a bag, and we'd also, like sometimes we'd even put letters from us that said, hi, how are you doing? And we did about, up to 80 bags of all of these kind of things, different things. Like sometimes it had different themes. Like one theme was how to take care of yourself. So like like things like um, personal hygiene, uh, personal pipes, group, yeah, that kind of stuff. And, yes. No, like, and and do you got would you guys provide? Well, because you know during the pandemic. Um, uh, Grooming is so important and personal yeah. hygiene and right. self-care. Like yeah. maybe you guys would provide a list of barber shops in the area or yeah. Yeah. something like that. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. We provided like information about how like the pandemic itself and even when it came time to get the vaccine, we, we provided information about the vaccine and how to get it and, you know, all the things that could teach you about it. Mm -hmm. um, so folks were informed about it. Now, uh, with, the, with the pandemic, before my wife asked the question, um, when you say the care packages in those bags, would yep. you guys also provide, because Vermont has, um, or around the world, especially <laughs> now, because food prices are going up. Right, right, okay? right. It's kind of scary. You know, during the pandemic, yeah. And it might be a mental health issue. People were hoarding toilet paper. People were yeah. hoarding paper tissue. Right. People were hoarding different things. Right. Do, does Did Washington County Mental Health and the Learning Collaborative also provide extra food for people who needed it? 
um, different parts of the agency did do that. Yep, it wasn't through the Learning Collaborative, I'm, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. through different parts of Washington County, different divisions, they did provide lunches and participated in putting lunches together and getting them out. And if we, a couple of times, we had people that did end up getting COVID and we, I like I would go out and buy a bunch of food and bring it to their house. And you would just so leave it outside the door. Leave it outside, yeah. What we did also provide was um, masks and um, any kind of items that were needed to clean mm -hmm. and keep things safe. Mm -hmm. We always put that kind of stuff in the bags. Do you think, um, I don't know, this could be a general question. Um, it, around the misconceptions of mental health, do you think people who were more, with mental health conditions were more scared of the mm. pandemic right. than normal right. situation? That's, that's a really good question. I'm I, sorry yeah. if, I, if, if I said yeah. it the wrong way. No, no, I hear what you're saying. Were there more concerns than other people? I think that the folks that we work with, um, I think one of the major challenges for them was the the isolation that was yeah. connected to it. Because for, Some of for four months during the pandemic, we were like, right. you have to stay in place. And, right, you know, right. For me, that's kind of hard. It's, it was ve very difficult for our folks. Um, some of our everything folks... It was like Zoom meetings, everything, 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 everything was like Zoom. Yeah, and you have to stay home, and you right. can either go to the to the... To the grocery store right. or pharmacy. Go, go ahead. Right, Continue. and especially if you have to rely on somebody else to help you to get to the grocery store or the laundry. Um, a lot of our folks was are extremely isolated, and we had some. We have some tremendous staff that stayed on and were willing to help and keep people working and and keep helping folks to get to the grocery store to the or to get on telemedicine so they can get to their doctors i mean there were so many challenges what is the difference between telemedicine and telehealth because that telehealth uh, like i had mentioned back in january um at a, at a former able to run air uh, episode Telehealth doesn't necessarily because, you know, for example, I have challenges and so does my right. wife, but right. the telehealth doesn't really help someone who has to get to the epilepsy doctor or dentist right. or what is the difference between medicine, the telemedicine and telehealth? Right. I think they're kind of the same. Um, basically, during the pandemic, what became really clear is that you couldn't get to the doctors if you had any kind of illness other than, you know, COVID. And so what we had to do is get online with your doctor and get online with your counselor. And that is a hard, you know, you don't always get everything you need from that, but I think it was really helpful in at least um, diagnosing and getting the basics done. And then if you needed a specialist, then we needed to find ways to access that specialist to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, go ahead. You want to ask a question? Yes. Um, <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. Slow down. Go ahead. I know. I want to ask you about the article on the Veep Digger. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, how was that? Um, I read it. It was very interesting to read it. <laughs> yeah. How, how, does, how, how does how does art? Go ahead. Uh, absolutely. Like a therapy or something? Like a therapy? Like In terms therapy? of the pandemic, how did, how did the art stay alive within Washington yeah. County Mental Health? Is that her so, question? Yeah. The, so in the Learning Collaborative, we have a program called Shockwave and Studios, and we have a Shockwave magazine. And we feel that providing an opportunity to express yourself through art and poetry and writing stories and dancing and all kinds of other ways is really critical to your mental health. But also 
it's also about expressing who you are in the world and being able to bring that to the world, in, into the community. So the article that you're talking about was yeah. related to the art gallery showing. And I think it's really important and in in the folks that we work with want to show who they are to the world. And, mm -hmm. and so- How, we, how extensive, uh, since you mentioned Shockwave, because you spoke about it on several occasions before, how extensive is Shockwave, because um, you can't show the person's, uh, you know, name or picture or something like that. But because um, usually with bylines with newspapers, you have the picture there. How? But how extensive is Shockwave and, um, you know, with poems and other yeah. things? So it's it, it's very extensive. We most of our. Uh, individuals that we work with, a lot of them have pieces that they've done. If you come over to our office, we have in the auditorium at Grandview, we have mm -hmm. met much of their art up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And we also have a gallery, we're working with the Department of Health that right before the pandemic, we did a whole gallery showing up on the second floor where WIC is. And of all What's the art- What's WIC? I'm sorry. A WIC works with um, individuals like women and children to provide health services and access to resources. It's mm. a really great program. Um, and they wanted to do something with us, so we, we really want to work on the health of our individuals that we work with to make sure that resources are equitable for them, that they have access to resources that help them to be healthy mm -hmm. and you know doing creative activities helps you tell your story right now we have a class through the pandemic and a number of individuals have written stories and we're looking at doing a reception with a storytelling night so that folks could tell their stories they really want to tell their stories to other people and to the community so, so we're going to do see. like poems stories yeah. drawings yep etc exactly Okay. We we participate. It's a, it's a way of expressing themselves. Exactly, exactly. Good, which is good in a way. So they Was that they does that include their, video their, too, or just it, it can? They yep. Understand their story, so it's a good way to communicate. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. It. You can share your voice through your creative expression. How how um, how long has Shockwave been around? Oh gosh, I think for about fifteen years. It, seems like we have the old shockwave magazine and now aaron martineau is our graphic designer and our art teacher and he works to you know create the shockwave with the uh, individuals mm -hmm. that want to share their their um their what are the misconceptions around uh, i usually ask this but what are the missions the the the, the, the misconceptions around people with mental illness or mental challenges that people don't seem to understand? Well, I think one that's really um, evident that I hear sometimes from folks in the community is that someone with a developmental disability isn't capable of taking care of themselves or capable of contributing to the world. And that's just I, so wrong. I hear wrong. that too. I hear it that is too. so wrong. And one of the art things that we did, we, our whole theme was I am you. And it was all about sharing that we're just like everybody else and we are capable and we can contribute to the world and we need to be given the opportunities to do that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, now, this is a biggie. Media, how does media portray or mm -hmm. has, in the media, has mental health been given a bad rap lately? Or, or in the oh, past, and how, how yeah. can we kind of nip that in the bud and, right. and kind of bring right. it to a positive light? Right. Well, I think you're bringing up this whole concept of representation matters, and that's really important to me, and how we include people with disabilities in our films and in our radio shows and in other media, YouTubes, and that we portray individuals that are living with disabilities in positive ways. And I think 
historically we have not done a good job of that mm. um, in the Western world. I think we're starting to get a little bit better with that, but the, it still has world, a long way. Around the world, for example, uh, uh, sorry for interruption, but around the world, for example, you know, different countries and also different, they have um, reality shows with people with special needs. Yeah. I don't like that because it, it's like you're pigeonholing, uh, how can I put this? Yeah. You're pigeonholing a reality, yeah, a reality show is okay, but... Right. You know, it opens up to a whole negative right, thing. Right, right, you right. Know, you're Yeah, and you're just focusing on that. What, what would really be important is that people with disabilities are just included as actors and actresses in everyday shows. And yeah, that, you, you remember that TV show, Life Goes On. Right, right. Yeah, and yeah. then they have the good doctor. Right, and, right. Um, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, the good doctor, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you're homeless, let's say, and you have an intellectual disability, how does that affect you? That yeah, affect you right I know this has nothing to do with the mental, the, the, the learning collaborative, but with homelessness also and, and mental right. health, that's also another issue. Yeah, it definitely is an issue. And right now, since the pandemic, it's an even bigger issue that we're trying to address as a state. Which we will address on another show yeah. as well. Right. Um, so how how has um, um, you know arts important you know with this um, is the art shows going to continue even during the pandemic or are you guys going to expand that? Absolutely. I mean, now the one thing is that right now we're not able to do a gallery showing. So, but it is going to happen again. Um, right now, I'm actually, we're working on a uh, Shockwave magazine that its theme is how the pandemic affected you and what kind of things came up for you. And what we did was we invited everyone from Washington County to participate, including staff. So it will be a magazine with both our clients and our consumers and our staff. So we're doing a collaboration with everybody. Mm -hmm. Because I think that what's really important is that we use the opportunity to do art and all the expressive opportunities as a way to heal from the pandemic. Um, so since you say that, what are certain, what is one or two ways, well, we have some time left, but what are some ways that people can heal from the pandemic from your standpoint? Well, one way is to talk about how you feel. Mm -hmm. Like to get together with people that you feel support you and to talk to you. Talk. Talk is really important. Connecting with other people in whatever way. Um, you know, one of the things that I did during the pandemic to, so that I didn't feel so bad was I love music. So I was dancing all the time. So every day when I came home for work, I danced a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and write your story. I heard, I heard dancing reverses the sign of aging. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Dancing is great exercise. I, I dance, you know, it's good. You know, it's good to exercise because it gets you moving, you know. Yeah. Right, right, Can we go right. Ahead? Writing your story, doing art. Um, you know, participating, going for walks outside. You know, being in nature is really important because nature is there for us too. You know. Mm -hmm. um, even, now, even uh, my husband and I, uh, we took my, you know, my my nephew's kids to the teddy bear factory. That's also good therapy because yeah. you can you can make. Yeah, we went to the teddy bear factory during the pandemic. Great, great, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, where can people? reach Washington County and the Learning Collaborative? And so in order to reach the Learning Collaborative, um, you can do it one of a few ways. One is that you can contact me and my, at my email, and that's um, marykay.casper at wcmhs.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can call me at 802 505 8862. 
Okay. Um, those are definitely ways that you can um, contact me. And or, if you're, and I understand that Washington County Mental Health um, Services has a crisis number. Anyone's in crisis, right. what is that number? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't have it on with, on with me right now. Um, um, but yeah. we can get it on the website. Yes. Um, if, can you also view the Shockwave magazine online? That's something we're working on, Arlene. That's a really good, I really want to get it online. And that's something we're working so on. Everybody can see it. I like to see it too. I like to read stories. Right. Too, you know. Yeah. So yeah. if if you're in crisis and you need help from Washington County Mental Health, you can go to www.wcmhs.org. Uh, dot dot that number, that website, once again, is www.wcmhs.org. Dot org. Um, we would like to thank uh, Mary Kay Casper of Washington County Mental Health Learning Collaborative for joining us on um, today's edition. Um, if, um, you know, art is extremely important and art programs, especially for people with mental health and developmental disabilities, we must uh, keep those programs going and we thank you for coming to Able to on it. We would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health uh, Services, Green Mountain Support Services. We would also like to thank the following partners, um, Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and also the, uh, the, Montpel the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition of Montpelier, Vermont, and many, many, many others for uh, partnering with Able Then On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Able Then On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Able Den On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Den On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Den On Air is a member of the National Academy 